this video, I'll be introducing the formal definition of the Riemann integral. Many of the definitions you've heard before involved limits or some pseudo-math, but this is the formal, most extensive definition of the Riemann integral. So let's start off with the definition of what's called a partition. Okay, so we say that a partition over the interval from A to B is a finite set of points, P, which is actually going to be a sequence from I equals 1 to N, such that A is going to be equal to X1, it's going to be less than or equal to X2, all the way up until Xn minus 1 less than or equal to Xn, which is equal to B. Okay. So basically meaning that right here we have x1, which is also a, or we have xn, which is also b. Right here we have x2, we have x3, xn minus 1 to xn. And that's the partition of the interval. Okay, so you're just splitting it up into a bunch of little parts. Now what we do is we intuitively say that between a and b a function right defined between a and b and we want to take the area there we just partition the interval below it into these four points in this case create three rectangles sum up all the areas and you have an approximation and you just approach it except we're going to make it more rigorous okay we're going to avoid using limits because we don't know if those converge all the time and so in our new definition we're going to be using supremums and infimums which always have value as long as it's bounded which in this case it always will be okay so definition two uh, prerequisites things we need beforehand for a partition p which is going to be xi from i equals 1 to n and f from a to b into r define uppercase m i to be the supremum of f of x for x between xi minus 1 and xi and say that lowercase mi is going to be the infimum of f of x for x between xi minus 1 and xi. Okay? And so here we are just intuitively looking at between this partition what we're looking at is the highest valued point and the lowest valued point in between those two points. And we're going to make those the heights of our rectangles. And this one will give us the upper integral and this one will give us the lower integral because we're taking the lower bound. You might have learned left and right integrals but we're not going to deal with those because those aren't useful where we're coming from. And so what we also define is the sum of the areas. So we say that u of fp is going to be the area of all the rectangles. So it's going to be the sum from i equals 1 to n of mi times delta xi. Okay, makes sense because this means upper. This is the upper rectangle. And then we're going to have lower f p is going to be the area of all the lower rectangles added up like that we can define the Lebesgue integral or the Riemann integral sorry for a function f from a b into r um, the integral from a to b we're going to take the upper one, okay? So that's going to be f dx. And just as we did before, we're going to take an infimum of the uppers. 
So it's going to be infimum of u of f p for partitions p. Okay, so for any partition p, this will have a value, and we're taking the infimums of those. And then the lower integral of f dx is going to be equal to the supremum of the lower bounds. Sup l p f for partitions p. Is that if these are equal, f is Riemann integral. And we just call it the integral from a to b f dx. So the idea is that what we do is we approach it from the bottom and we approach it from the top. If those approachments are equal to each other, we know that it's well defined and we have the integral. But uh, if you've seen Dr. Pyam's video, you know that there are non Riemann integrable functions. For example, the indicator function of the rationals, okay? Which is uh, 0 if x is not in the rationals and 1 if x is in the rationals. And so, how do we know this is not Riemann integral? Because between any two points, there is infinitely many rationals, u of fp is always going to be 1. No matter the partition, and I'm doing this between 0 and 1. If I have the interval between 0 and 1 right here, and I select two point, and I partition it like this, right here, the supremum is going to be 1 times whatever this value is. 1 right there, 1 right there, because those are the supremums. It's either going to be 0 or 1. It's 1 because that's the larger value. So this is going to be 1 times this distance, 1 times this distance, 1 times this distances, distance. And because this partitions it, those distances have to add up to 1. And same with the lower, except it's 0. The lower is, all, is 0. The upper is 1, the infimums and supremums don't match up. You can't get a Riemann integral out of this. You get different upper and lower integrals. And that's why we need the Lebesgue integral. This definition doesn't give you it. Even though it does extend more than what you might have thought, it still doesn't give you it. Now as a bonus, I'm going to add in the Stalgitz integral. I probably butchered that. I've never heard anyone say it right. So, uh, so the definition is that the integral from a to b upper of f d alpha is going to be u, the infimum of u f p alpha, which I'm going to define it right here, u of fp alpha is going to be defined to be the sum from i equals 1 to n of mi times what's known as delta alpha i. What's delta alpha i? Well, it's quite simple, is that you just plug in xi and then right here you plug in xi minus 1. Okay, it's going to be there. And then same thing with the lower, defined to be sum from i equals 1 to n of lowercase m times delta alpha i. You have that, and then the lower integral from a to b, lower of f d alpha, is going to be the supremum of l f p alpha. And then if they're equal, you have it. And that's really just a simple exp uh, expansion, and that's it.